Broadcasting live from sunny California, it's 10 Minutes in Tinseltown with Ms. Meliz, a.k.a. Melissa Reyes. And now, from the left corner, your host, Melissa Reyes. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on Tinseltown tonight. I'm Melissa Reyes, and tonight I have a very special guest. I'm so happy to be able to have her all to myself and to share her all with you, share her with you all. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Anna Scheller. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. So thank you, everybody, for being here. And um, Anna comes to us from, where are you located? Texas? I'm on the, yeah, I'm on the uh, Mexico, Texas, Mexico border on, in Del Rio, Texas. In Del Rio. Okay. Awesome. All right. And um, you may be my first interview from Texas. I can't believe it. But I'm trying to think if I know anybody huh. else. So couple, let's see, maybe one other person. So anyhow, hello. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, some of the things that people find interesting about me is that um, I am, well, besides being an entrepreneur, a business owner, and all that stuff, I'm, uh, I'm a black belt in the martial arts, obviously, and um, I'm also the mom of seven kids. Wow. Yes, yes. So I, I get a, a number of responses mm -hmm. that way. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, some people think I'm patient. It, what it is is the kids helped me to learn to curb the tendency to want to kill people. Um, <laughs> no, not, not really. They're wonderful. They're great kids. Um, and I've been married. My husband and I were trying to figure out, is it 33, 34, 35? <laughs> so we've been married for, for quite some time. Is that what happens uh, after 30 years? You're like, how many years? It all really seems matter? like a dream. It, you know, it, it, it is. It's really cool. We, uh, we've had the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I can mm -hmm. say after, well, I guess 34 years as we've been married, we've known each other, 35. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's really rewarding to be able to come home and still call him my boyfriend. Yeah, that's neat. I have that in common. I have, uh, I've been in a long relationship, too. My husband and I have been married for 24 years, we've been together for 30, and I guess I've known him for 32 years. And um, wow. it's hard, like those, the, that same 30 years, just like coming out of my mouth feels awkward because it just doesn't seem like it's that long. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's been, um, like you said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But uh, we're in a good spot right now. We're feeling pretty pretty happy with the kids growing up and our, we have three boys and they're they're getting older every day every day duh. I feel like I think they're going to be taking care of me pretty soon and my, <laughs> my 19 year old just bought me a new coffee maker because my old one got um the, the uh, ant colony decided to live in it and then after that oh. nobody we cleaned oh. it out as best as we can, but those ants kept coming from somewhere. And I'm like, okay. Ooh, it was yuck. really weird. Yeah, I know. Yucky. But um, so then we have a lot of ants where I live. So if they get in, they take over. Take over. <laughs> so, um, well, that's that's really neat. So, Anna, the the main reason why you're here today is because you're talking about, and I've seen you do a lot of interviews, and you have a show your, uh, yourself. We we're talking about your um, new program that you have coming up. So, we're going to be talking a lot about that tonight. So, everybody who's come over to watch and uh, to get some tips about black belt selling, uh, will be finding out all about that and the correlation between your martial arts and your sales background. It's something that I'm personally interested in. And then, um, you know, we'll find out just a little bit more about you and your family and your kids and the things that you love to do. So um, tell us about the program. Well, the program actually got started as a result of my daughter and I starting to work together. My daughter was in sales. And when I got sales training, I said, oh, my gosh, you just have to do this. And she said, mom, mom. I know how to sell. 
<laughs> I'm the top producer in my company. I, I, I don't need any sales training. And I said, oh, okay, you know, because I don't believe in being pushy. I don't believe in being salesy. So about, you know, three months later, Stephanie, oh, my gosh, I'm learning so much. You really need to do this. Mom, mom, mom. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Haven't we had this conversation before? So then um, one about a year after I started uh, my own journey into sales training, I invited my mentor, Eric Lofholm, to come and speak at our uh, Chamber of Commerce banquet. And so I said, Stephanie, you know, you can at least meet the guy. And uh, she said, yeah. So we met him at the airport, and um, he opened her eyes to what she was doing that she needed to change so that she could change her life. And not just change her life. But um, he planted seeds in her to begin her own business. Mm. And she was, she was not happy in her, in her sales job, to be honest. And so she, it was very interesting. So that started the wheels turning. And then about two months later, I said, you know, what's really important is that you share the knowledge you have. It helps ingrain the knowledge. And it also helps you to get better. And it helps other people. So we started a 15-minute conference call every Friday, 12.30 noon uh, Central Time. And uh, we were telling Eric about it. We were so excited. You know, we thought, wow, we're really doing something here. And and he said, you know, you guys ought to think about a radio show. Radio show. Mm -hmm. You've got to be kidding. So we looked into starting our own podcast. So we, um, I actually have two radio shows and a blab, mm -hmm. as if I'm not doing enough. But uh, <laughs> Uh, so, but it started out with blog talk radio. And when we were trying to come up with a name, a friend said, my gosh, you're both black belts. You should call it black belt selling. Mm. And I said, you know, that that's really a good idea because we were taking martial arts uh, ideas, martial arts principles and philosophies, and we mm -hmm. were applying them to training. So that was, those were the seeds of it. And then, um, and so we've actually been talking about writing a book and writing a book and writing a book. Well, I just launched and I, I did a short book based on an interview I did with Eric. And um, I, I did a series. A really of good idea, by the way. I downloaded the book and I started that, looking at I just think that was a really good idea to turn that interview into a book. Really well, thank you. There's actually, it's going to be a series because I've got a number of fantastic interviews that we've done on Blog Talk Radio that we're still doing. So Blog Talk Radio, we're um, 18, 18, 19 months into doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we've just taken things that we've learned from experts. And then we, we take them and we help folks with them. So I also have a really short series of videos that I've done about seven principles of black belt selling. Mm -hmm. And I took those videos and I thought that really could be a program that could be something that could help people break through the, the challenges and the obstacles that they have on the inside. Cause most of our sales challenges are not because we don't know, we don't know what to do or mm -hmm. we don't know a sales process. It's that we tend to have some, some character traits we need to develop that will help us to become more consistent, that will help us to face our fears when it comes to sales, when it comes to closing or asking for the order or handling objections. Mm -hmm. And so I've actually turned that into my own four week webinar series. And with the series, then I also invite all the participants to get a 30 minute free uh, coaching call with me mm -hmm. to see how I can help them further. Is it hard to sell selling? Oh, I've got some feedback. I don't know if that's coming from you or what, but I don't know if you hear that. Do you hear that? Um, I heard a little bit. I heard a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's okay. So, so is it hard to sell selling or is it like something everybody wants to learn? Well, um, it's like everything, Melissa. I think mm -hmm. It's, I look for people who want to sell. So if I look for people who want to sell, then selling, selling is not hard. <laughs> it's not hard at all. Um, if people tell me, oh, well, I don't do that. Well, then they're, 
not interested and I don't pitch to them because that's not something that's going to benefit them and it's not going to benefit me. It always has to be a Mm win-win. So it really isn't hard because in my book, everybody's selling. Mm-hmm. I'm selling to my husband when I want him to go out and do the yard work. I'm I'm selling to my children when I want them to cook dinner or clean up the dishes. Uh, because sales is nothing more than a conversation about influence. That's all it is. I, I love that you said that because that is what I wrote um, on Facebook today. Aren't we all selling? And selling is a conversation. That's what you said. I'm going to write that down. The conversation. Conversation. Have to about influence, yeah. about influence, because what are we all doing? We want to be able to have influence. We want to be able to help other people. So here's, here's a great example. Um, let's say you see someone struggling and you know there's a great way for them to come out of their challenge and you have the solution. And so you approach them and what are you trying to do? You're trying to help them. You're not trying to harm them. You're wanting to help them. Mm -hmm. So the challenge becomes, how do I get somebody who's got a, a, a problem and teach them the solution that will help them solve their problem? And I have to do it in such a way that they can see and begin to enjoy the benefits of the solution Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. sometimes people have problems, but they don't, they don't understand how the solution is going to help them. So mm-hmm. that's yeah, what sales yeah. really is. It's finding people with a problem and helping them find a solution. So how did you get into all of this? <laughs> well, I started... I, my husband and I started the American dream. We, uh, we were both, my husband was in military. We decided that we wanted to go into real estate investing. So what started as buying a few houses here and there for mm-hmm. re- rental real estate turned into a corporate housing business, which requires sales skills. And uh, nine years into this little adventure, I realized that um, not only was I not making money, But I was working like a slave, not getting paid anything at all. And um, actually, we were losing money. And I was challenged. Nine years. (laughs) Well, I guess I guess we were holding, but it was after nine years and you spend 10 to 12 to 14 hours a day working, sometimes Mm -hmm. weekends, 10 Mm -hmm. to 12 hours on the weekend as well. It gets old really fast, not getting paid. Yeah. So someone suggested that I get, or I get, I study sales and I'd never Mm -hmm. thought about it. I thought I'm not a salesperson. I'm a real Mm -hmm. estate investor. Mm -hmm. I'm a landlord. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I, uh, I got the book by by Brian Tracy, the psychology of selling. And I learned that sales was a learnable skill. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is great. I can learn how to sell. I can learn how to persuade people. I can learn how to answer objections, which was my greatest fear. Um, What do you do when people say it's too expensive? What do you do when they say, "Um, I'm not interested. I have to talk to my wife. I have to talk to my husband. I have to talk to my dog. I have to, you know, all. (laughs) I have it. Do I tell you? (laughs) So, right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's how I got started. I just, I, my husband recommended that I go to a free training with Eric and it sounded good and I was hungry and I was just ready to move mm-hmm. forward. And so I did, I, I just did. And, and uh, grew my business see? 50%. Really? Wow. I was going to say, how soon did you see results? Within a year, within wow. a year, 50%. Mm-hmm. That's terrific. That's, that's great. So what's the timeline on that? When did you start doing that to the point where you were at, where you mentioned before, where you started with your daughter asking her to get involved with you and starting the radio show? Um, it was about a year. It was a, well, actually the second show I just started about three or four months ago, but the, um, 
it was about a year, year and a year and couple of months when we started working together. And um, we've actually been working together ever since we do a live training together in San Antonio every other oh, month. Really? As well. That's so amazing. Yes. Just, I really hand it to you. That's, that's hard. That's awesome. I mean, I just can't. I, I don't know what to say. Like what I want to say is that I am, um, I, I'm a starter. I start things and I do things. And this is the one thing I've done the longest, I think, besides my day job. And, um, so when I see somebody start something and it grows to something else and then they keep doing it and it's successful that, you know, you may not realize what golden touch that is, you know, really oh. it takes someone special to Thank do that. You. It's true. So, you know what? I'm going to take a, a brief pause. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. So, so we're good. Let me know. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's a better. It's a little better. It's a little better. No, I hear it. I don't hear it. <laughs> well, anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. Everybody is, can hear you and can hear me and see us just fine. And, uh, let me see. So that's really, really neat, Anna, where you're talking, you were telling me about um, how you got started in sales and how your sales increased by 50% with the techniques that you've learned. What attracted you to that, to Eric and that, I mean, how did you come to know him? Is he the one who taught you the, you went to a class or something? Well, it was kind of a class. Um, we, my husband and I have been involved with Peak Potentials for quite a few years. It's called New Peaks now, but the, the Harv Ecker. And um, somehow my husband got on Eric's email list. And my husband's not into sales. As a matter of fact, he repeatedly tells me how he's not into sales. But um, he knew I was studying sales. And I guess I must have been talking to him about learning how to handle objections, which was still new to me, still kind of scary, but exciting because now I could feel that I had some power in a conversation, mm. which I didn't have before. So uh, one day he sends me this link and he says, honey, I think you might be interested in it. It was from Eric. It was a free conference call on none other than objection handling. Yeah. So, Yeah. So I thought it was normally on one of my Taekwondo nights and I'm very dedicated to Taekwondo. I teach it now. I am actually preparing to uh, test as a master in about three years and mm -hmm. it, it takes quite a bit of preparation. So I'm, I'm practicing even now for a test three years down the road. So I'm a very dedicated student, but this was so important that I decided I was going to stay home that night and listen to this recording. We're not recording. It was, an, it was a live call. My intention was to buy nothing because I figured that good sales training, really good sales training, was going to cost an arm and a leg. Mm. And I didn't have an arm and a leg to spend. <laughs> um, I was, I was, I only got on there because, well, I knew he would do an offer, um, but I also knew he would give great information. So I was planning to take the money and run, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So Eric begins by sharing that he's going to make an offer for us to join him in a mentoring program for as little as $50 a month. And at first I'm like, yeah, probably $50 a month until I have great grandchildren. Yeah, $50 a month. That's a big. It was, it job. was, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, this can't be real. But then he shared his story, how he was in telemarketing and he went from worst to first in a matter of 60 days with the information he would be sharing with us. Mm -hmm. Of course, that perked me because I'm like, well, I feel like I'm the worst in my company. Of course, I was the only one doing sales in my company. So, <laughs> you know, I could go either way, right? <laughs> right. That's funny. Um, so, so, but I, I really picked, I really listened. And he said, these the same things that I'm teaching you are the things that I learned that helped me go from worst to first in 60 days. So I thought, what the heck? If I'm if if I can't take this information, which seemed reasonable and logical and made a lot of sense to me, if I couldn't take this and earn an additional fifty dollars a month, and at that time it was for eight months, okay, for that right? Then, who? Then truly, I wasn't born to be a salesman, mm -hmm. and it was going to only be four hundred dollars. And even though I really couldn't see how to make four hundred dollars work at that point. I decided to take a leap of faith and join the program. Well, then 
um, after that, I learned about scripting and I learned about how to accelerate your sales. And then I started teaching this organically to other people. People were coming to me and go, wow, I'm having trouble doing this. Can you help me? And I was telling Eric about this and he said, Anna, you're a natural trainer. You really need to think about sharing your knowledge and getting paid for it. You're also intuitive because I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> I was oh. going to ask what inspired you to start teaching because you seem to be telling me, you know, you, you're teaching take on drill, you're teaching, you know, these courses and, you know, I'm meeting you at a time when you're already there, but how did you come to that? You know, and you answered by by telling me that he, you know, he saw that in you because people were naturally in you. And I feel I totally get that because I when I saw you on Blab the first time and every time I've connected with you, you have such a giving spirit. You have, um, you, you know, you connect on a level that feels, uh, you know, for lack of another word that comes to mind, but authentic, which, you know, is a good <laughs> word. Authenticity, it's a good thing. It, it means it's you're a real lot. person and you really <laughs> care. It's not a bad word. So right. but everybody's like, oh, it's overused. So, you know, maybe that's because we care about that. You're a caring person. Um, I mentioned to Jonathan Tripp today that I was going to be interviewing you and he's like, oh, she's my first. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> you're one of the first interviews that he did. And so he said, don't tell her that. So, of course, I'm like, I, I don't know me very well. I, if you <laughs> tell me, you have to kill me. <laughs> oh, uh, he, he, knew, he knows better than to tell me something like that and not expect me to say anything. But um, <laughs> so anyhow, I just thought, well, you know, the first time I ever saw you was on his show here on Blab. I think that was the first time that I became aware of you and you were, did a great um, talk, talk then. And um so it just flash forward to, you know, finding you on Instagram and we have that thing in common with the mandalas because you also color mandalas. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. So everyone here, except maybe Chris knows uh, that I do mandalas and, and I just discovered my passion for, for art this past year where I, you know, with through the mandalas. So we have that connection too. And so it's all, oh, hello. It is always so nice <laughs> to, um, to connect on many levels with someone who you've never met, but you feel like you know. So that's so that takes me to asking you, um, because I'm gonna come back to the black belt selling, but uh, tell me, how did you, how long have you been doing the Taekwondo or Taekwondo and how long, have, how, you know, what made you start doing that? Well, awesome? my Taekwondo career came out of tragedy, to be honest. Oh, okay. Um, Are you willing to share? Are you willing to share it? A little bit, yes. Okay. Um, it, one of my children had um, had become the victim of a crime, mm. and so we had been told that. about this Taekwondo school in town, and it was um, it was a Christian school. And I kind of thought, yeah, 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 I try to do that. I get don't don't even go there. But we they were running us a, mm. a summer camp, and um, we were taking care of some. My kids had some friends over and they're like, oh, no, no, you have to take us to this camp tomorrow morning. And I said, OK. And then it looked like a lot of fun. The kids were doing all these games and it was great. And so um, I said, well, can I enroll my children? And they said, oh, yeah, sure. Come on in. And so my kids started to participate mm -hmm. and uh, just were having a really good time and, and had a lot of fun. And so I approached the owner of the school who happened to be the pastor of a church here in town. And I said, um, so what does it take? You know, what do you guys do? I wanted to understand a little bit more before I enrolled my children, even though my kids were having a fabulous time. Mm -hmm, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I felt comfortable with their, the way they integrated Christianity and Taekwondo. So yeah, we went ahead yes. and enrolled the kids because one, we saw this as an opportunity to build confidence in the child who had been victimized. Mm -hmm. And then I'm taking the kids, and of course, we're like everybody else. Before I jumped out of the lab earlier, I heard you mention to somebody how when your kids are in Taekwondo, you see a lot of Taekwondo or, or karate. Mm -hmm. You watch. So yeah. Was, well, you do. You watch and so, them, and you learn a little. Uh, you do. Mm -hmm. You do. And so I, I went up to the instructor because I saw there were some parents on the floor, and I said, so can parents join? And he said, absolutely. 
And the way the school pricing was structured, it didn't cost me anything else to join. So we were under a, when you have like five kids and take one no, <laughs> you know, I guess I got the, you know, I got the big SeaWorld discount or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and then, so I said, sure, I'll, I'll do it. And I'll, this is a great way to connect with my kids and we'll have a great deal of fun and we'll just enjoy ourselves. So uh, that's how I got started nine years ago. Had no mm. intention of getting a black belt, none whatsoever. Did not think I was black belt material. Um, there was no way I was going to hit people. <laughs> I had to learn how to do. No way I was going to kick someone, which I had to learn how to do. Mm. And I definitely wasn't rolling on the ground which I had to learn how to do. So um, we had the first black belt test come up and I'm thinking, I'm an old person. I was in my forties at the time mm -hmm. there. I, I can't kick as high. I can't jump as high. Yeah. I can't run as fast. You know, I was thinking I'll just wait till the next black belt test. Mm -hmm. And I was probably within a couple of ranks of being ready for black. And uh, my instructor said, so how long have you been doing this? And he's figuring all these numbers out. And he goes, um, I'd like to invite you to black belt testing. And wow. I was excited and I was scared all at the same time. And I'll be honest with you, black belt selling, the seeds of black belt selling came out of that very first black belt training that I went through because I underwent a huge transformation, not only as a, a martial artist, but as a person. Mm -hmm. I could completely and, relate to that, Anna. I was just, that's what I was telling everybody. Well, we took a little break. Um, I, I, when my kids were little, I took them to a class at the YMCA. They did the karate class and um, we joined the family class so that we could practice with them. And then I liked it so much. I took a, a adult class and that's mm -hmm. the one where I started doing the, sparring and the grappling and the you know it was a huge thing for me being a new mom and having little kids and being the youngest in my family and just to come out and get that type of confidence and I'd never been athletic I had no no idea how strong I could be you know but they taught me you know so much and I learned so much and changed myself tremendously that it's still with me all the time. And I don't know if you saw the blog post yet, but I, you know, I mentioned that in the blog post that I posted uh, last night about, or yeah, it was yesterday about, um, you know, how I feel it even today. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's been 12, 13 years since I took the class. I didn't continue with it. After a while, the kids, you know, went on to other things and every other sport. And I did not follow along with them on football and lacrosse and basketball. <laughs> <laughs> There's no moms doing that, which is fine with me. But yeah. um, but I really did enjoy that um, and learned so much and, and uh, can completely relate to that. And, and also having a little bit of background in business, I can see how you would put that together. And I just think it's brilliant. And if everybody here hasn't taken any, if you haven't taken a, any type of martial arts, and I know that karate is uh, similar to Taekwondo, two different countries, um, but uh, it's a, it's similar in a lot of ways. I think there's more kicking in in Taekwondo. A lot. Yeah. And so, um, but I remember doing a lot of kicking too. Um, <laughs> But you, it does, you do go through a rank, like different color level belts is kind of how, how we did it. And you test. And um, when your sensei says you're ready um, mm -hmm. to go to the next level, it's a huge thing. It is a huge honor. It and is. so, you know, bringing that back to, um, your, you know, your point is, and then the, he said that, and you had maybe, it, you know, be, based on your time and your experience had, you know, you maybe could have gone through a few more levels, but you were ready. And, right. and I think that's a big realization that we need to make as, you know, say we are like, we, we made the point earlier about everybody's a salesperson, really, because it's, it's about um, influence and um, having conversations to get, um, to get things going and, and finding a solution. And so I think that that's an important point in saying that, you know, if somebody empowers you that you're ready, 
it makes a big difference than just saying, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the same thing, like with your, with your daughter, you said to her, you know, here's this great thing, we should do it. And she wasn't ready, but then, mm -hmm. you know, that there's that breaking point. So what happened next? You went out for the test for black belt? I did. I um, So we started, we had four months of training and, and he, at first I didn't think I would make it, to be honest. I thought I would wash out pretty, <laughs> pretty fast. Um, again, I was, I was a stay at home. Well, I was, I was part-time business staying home with my kids. Uh, you know, when you're living an adult life, who makes time to practice martial arts? <laughs> and, uh, so, and I, I had been somewhat athletic as a child, but I'd always struggled with a weight issue. Mm -hmm. And so I really didn't see myself as athletic. I didn't see myself as skilled in martial arts. I was doing it to be with my kids. Right. right I was right. doing it to, to, to hang out with my children. And so, so the biggest challenge, my, my initial biggest challenge was to begin to realize that I, I couldn't quit. Mm. I had to see this thing through. Yeah, the example. Um, and there were days so hard. There were days I didn't want to go into my 85 degree garage mm. and work out. There were days that I would show up to class and I'd had a really trying day with a business or something happening. And I had to put all that mm -hmm. aside. Mm -hmm. I had to clear my head and I had to focus on the task at hand. And that's one of the things that I teach people in the Black Belt Selling Program is how do you eliminate the distractions and how do you focus mm. on what's important to get done in your business? And what I discovered, so here's a spoiler for those of you that are thinking about joining the <laughs> program. Spoiler here's alert. The way, the way you do it is to take one thing, do what you can in the moment, but commit to doing it. So, for example, um, I'll, I'll use a take one day illustration and a sales illustration if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. So, take one day. One of the most difficult kicks to master in Taekwondo is the side kick. Yes. Bruce Lee makes it look easy. It is one of the toughest kicks because the mechanics have to be just right. Um, so many, it's too easy to get the direction wrong. It's too easy not to angle your foot correctly. It's too easy to aim too low. When you're sparring, we have to have it above the belt because we want all the students to walk out without, you know, uh, compromising their progeny, you know, those <laughs> kinds of things. It. <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably one of the tough, I could not, I couldn't move the bag. So we, we would work against a bag. I could not with my sidekick, I couldn't move the bag. And my instructor would sit there and go, Anna, you're pushing. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for telling me that. And I would kick mm -hmm. again and he'd say, you're still pushing. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll try again. But what I learned to do is I just learned to work with, you know, if I couldn't get the height, which you get eventually, right. you work on the form, you work on the direction initially, and you just take it a little at a time. And if you will do that, you will begin to see progress actually rather quickly. People think it will take forever, but if you will dedicate mm -hmm. yourself to practice, then it, it, it happens. And see, the same thing happens in sales and business. You, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to talk to strangers. And, you know, I get that feeling myself sometimes. And I'm a sales trainer. <laughs> I am a business owner. My life depends on sales. Mm -hmm. It depends on it. If I'm not talking to people on a regular basis about my business, there's no business. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. So what you do then, if, if somebody's afraid to talk to people, you find what they're willing to do and you help them develop that. And then you take them one more step beyond and help them develop that. And so maybe they're not comfortable. Um, maybe they're not comfortable with public speaking, which, by the way, is a fantastic lead generation tool. 
this blab is an amazing lead generation mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even begun to see the power of live streaming yet. But but let's say they're afraid of public speaking. Well, but they're willing to go to a networking event, but they're a little shy about walking up to people and just handing cards to people. Mm -hmm. So they go up to the MC of the networking event and they say, what are you going to do with all those cards that are in the fishbowl? Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, I'm just going to dump them. Can I have them? Wow, that's a great idea. And then idea. you take the cards. Yeah. You know, that could be right there, that one event, that's an hour, 20, 30 leads. Yeah. Now, they may not be qualified leads, but that doesn't matter. You qualify them as you go. So, and you get people to do things consistently, they'll get. That. Yeah, no, that's a really great idea because and I, I understand that it's just an example and but if you were really shy and you did that and you contacted all those people all you have to do is say i was at that same event you know that's your that's your lead in that's really great um how i got over the networking fear of of go, feeling like i would waste an event i would go to a conference or something and then come back saying i really shouldn't i should have talked to that person and i didn't the way i got over that was by I made a bingo card of all the people that I wanted to speak to and meet. And I, and mm -hmm. when I met them, I asked them to sign their square. And it, so I left an impression oh. and I challenged myself to fill the card in the weekend uh -huh. at the conference. And then now I just go in blazing who I want to meet and go right up to them and tell them I want, I'm here to meet you. But at the, I was so nervous. I needed that. It was like my in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, now it's like an icebreaker place. People have used it um, for for events and things. And it's been, you know, it's that was how it just came to me. Like, I don't know, I want to make an effort to make to meet these people. I was tired of of walking away thinking you were there and I didn't see you. I, you know, because we have these online relationships. And then when you have an opportunity to meet in person and you might not uh -huh. see that person again, because that is not your regular community, you know. So, right, right, so, but right. I love that fishbowl thing. That's really neat. And so what was, um, you know, you have so many wonderful examples. What, how can people connect with you to be um, involved in the course? And how is the course going to be, or the program going to be played out? Is it, and it's online? Is it a webinar? Is it, tell me, tell me about it. Well, it's, it's a four week webinar series. And it's going to be starting the 3rd of May. And um, I, I pulled up, so I have people helping me, right? And I pulled up the web page. I'm going to put the web page here um, in the chat so people can go there. Because when you click on the link, it will take you to the four-week series. However, the web page doesn't talk about the four-week series. So I have to talk to There's my, to my I, team. That's not what you meant by under construction. I'm still kind of work being um, worked out. Well, well, I still have. I'm still putting some stuff on Del Rio sales training. So my web, uh, my the webinar is up there for people to okay. go to. But I'll I'll actually pull it off of um, I'll actually pull it off of the constant contact directly. But a little bit more yeah. about the program. It is a four week webinar series. Um, there's actually sheets that I uh, give to people to work on that take the concepts that we're talking about and help them to begin to integrate them into their routine and into their mm -hmm. lives. Because I don't believe that any education is worth anything if it's sitting on paper or sitting inside your computer. So uh, we start by setting a clear intention for what people want out mm -hmm. of the course, because I believe you have to have a focus so that you have, like it acts like a magnet to draw the information to you that you need for the goals you are setting for mm -hmm. yourself at that time. So we start with a clear intention and then we go through seven traits that are essential for mastering sales because when people think of black belts, they think of mastery. Mm -hmm. So things like an indomitable spirit. And um, I wrote a blog post today on LinkedIn. I'll put that in the chat for those who might be interested. LinkedIn. Um, and it talks about the um, five, five reasons people quit. The indomitable spirit is that you allow nothing to beat you. 
That doesn't mean that you plow through customers. It means that whatever challenges come your way, you keep going. You stay with it. You, you press through it. And, um, and recently someone um, actually said to me, I can't, they were talking about somebody in my family and I go, what? That person was talking about quitting. And I was actually my instructor. And he looked at me and he goes, Anna, that's not in your vocabulary, <laughs> is it? <laughs> so I want, but I want to help people develop that because sales or business or anything you want to do that requires your uh, requires excellence, requires that you work through situations where you didn't think you had it in you. It, you, it requires that you stick with it and you learn a new new skills to rise up to the challenge. You know, Jim Rohn says that um, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. That's great. And yeah. so that's what I want to help people do. So we talk about the indomitable spirit. We talk about how to develop consistency in your, in your business and in your sales. And um, we talk about perseverance. We talk mm -hmm. about a really important topic called visualization, mm -hmm. how the, the power of visualization. And um, again, spoiler mm -hmm. alert, um, I talk about Michael Phelps. Mm -hmm. Michael, some people don't know that Michael Phelps, when he set the world record, I think it was for butterfly. Mm -hmm. He went blind in the water. Oh, wow. No, I did not know that. His glasses slid, or the water filled up in his glasses and he couldn't see where he was going. He still touched, when he touched the pad, he had shaved seven tenths of a second off his very own wow. record to create a new world record. And the way he did that is every time before he, when he was practicing, before he would step into the water, he would visualize the perfect swim. Mm. He felt the water in his mind. He saw himself swimming it perfectly. So when the wa the glasses filled up, it wasn't a big deal. To he him. could see it in his mind's eye. Yeah, he could see it in his yeah. mind's eye. So That's we talk crazy. about all those things, and then we go through exercises to help people integrate those things into their life. So what's life. the time commitment for those to, to to complete your program for somebody who signs up? Is it daily, weekly, whenever, at their own speed? How does it um, work? It's a once a week program uh, for four weeks. It runs for approximately 45 minutes on Tuesdays. That's the live. And if you can't make the live, then I send out the replay the following day. So you actually, if, you've, if you're there live, you can watch it again. Or if not, you can go through it at your own mm -hmm. pace. And then when I send out the, um, when I send out the replay, then I also send out the sheets, mm -hmm. the study mm -hmm. sheets. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds really, really great because just listening to you for the last 45 minutes, it's um, I've learned so much and that was just kind of skipping around and talking generally. And I think that everybody should take this class and your program and um, it's black belt selling. What's the last part of it for and closing? How is it? Can you say what it's called? Black Belt? Um, black, it's Black Belt Selling Coaching Program. <laughs> black Belt <laughs> Selling Coaching Program. <laughs> it was pretty no, mundane. It was good. Yeah, There's something about the closing. There was marketing. something about the closing that you said. Oh, I'll, I'll find out what it is. I'll tell you what you said that was great. <laughs> but oh you, know, oh, you know what? The book is Black Belt Selling Closing with Oh, that's confidence. it. The book, Closing with Confidence. Yeah. Yes, that's the book. I okay. Wrote. All right. That's what I'm thinking of. So I want everybody to do both. So if you um, can, you want to tell us about your special offer? So, yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to put, I'm, I'm going to give one person a free seat on the course. If they'll sign up for my newsletter between now and the second of, or no, the, I think the 29th, uh, All right, but the 29th. Of yeah, April, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like just 10 days. Just, yeah. I'm getting a little that's lost. Okay. Here. 10 days. It's on my website. So, if you go to mitzmaliz.com, there's a link there and I'll take you straight to your, um, to your sign up sheet. All you have to do is push on, um, the picture of your 
of you. I think it's a beautiful picture of you. And um, <laughs> then it goes straight to, to your sign up sheet. And uh, so then you can be on the newsletter, which will be awesome. And you have a chance to be right. to get this program for free. So, well, um, you know, there's nothing to lose there. So that sounds like a really good deal. I'm going to put Exactly. And plus, everybody who signs up for my program will get a free copy of my book. Um, it's on Kindle right now. I'm getting, I'm in the process of trying to get it in published, book published. So I have a couple more steps to do for that, just because I'm trying to get some other things in place. So it's kind of had to be set aside for a little bit. But anyway, um, you'll get a book for free, as well as a 30 minute coaching session with me. Um, that's all part of it's all part of the process. That's terrific. And um, that's terrific. Well, you know, um, and that and the program is starting on. Did you say when is it start? May second, May 9th? It starts May May third. May third. Okay, so you got you know a a couple weeks, but we want everybody to go right now and sign up for this newsletter, and then you can get information about it and um, have a chance to win or sign up for the. For the program because it sounds like you can't go wrong you really can't go wrong and so um you know we had seven o'clock can you believe it went by really fast and oh, wow. i have all these amazing props and sound effects and all kinds of things and i didn't need to use any of them because i found the conversation so compelling and so um you're just so easy to listen to i love it but i wanted to talk to you a little <laughs> bit you. about what motivates you what um, besides your seven children and your sales livelihood and all of that and your incredible confidence and your ability to, um, you know, to have a black belt and to be a master, and all these things that you do, what is at the core of what you want in life? What's your core desire? What's your core value and what motivates you? What makes Anna tick? Well, you know, um, I'm a I'm a believer in Jesus, and so everything I do is to bring glory to Him. Everything I do is to serve Him, and mm. I don't always do it well. I don't always do it as perfectly as I would like, but ultimately, when I stand before the Lord, I'm. I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And I want to drag a whole bunch of people with me. Um, I want to get tears in I my eyes. I just want to be That's Jesus beautiful. in the world. That's beautiful. I'll take a moment. That's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful, everybody? Oh, my God. I just, you know what? I have to say, I, I, this is the type of superstar that I want in my tinsel town. You shine a light that is so bright. You're a celebrity rock star in my world. And I'm so glad to know you and to have you here to share uh, who you are. And, um, you know, I think that it just, everything about you breaks down that normal. Like it, Barb it says in the side chat here about how, you know, we don't normally think of someone like you or me that are doing martial arts. You're thinking about, you know, a, a stereotype. I'm not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even mean male or female, but it's, it, it's so like Bruce Lee, you know, or so like, you know, um, uh, Charlie's Chuck Angels, <laughs> you know, yeah. like a weird, t you know, at, but it's not, it's here. Anybody can do that. But when you do it well and apply yourself and when you have a purpose and a passion and it's about helping others and by serving um, serving the Lord or serving outside of yourself. That is what, um, that's what really makes a difference in this world. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Oh, you're a awesome. little doggy too. <laughs> dog. What's his name? Her name. Her name is Rue. Rue? Uh, from Kanga yes. and Rue. She used to jump. She doesn't wrote, she doesn't jump anymore. She's too old. <laughs> wow. What a, what a doll. I, thank you so much. Do you have any questions for me or anything else that you would like to touch on before we say good night? Well, you know, I mean, it would be fun 
um, we'll have to do the, we'll have to talk about mandalas yeah. another time because that is a um, powerful and a fascinating topic, um, especially in a world where we are just, um, everything's in blocks and everything's in lines. And, you know, we live in, we live in a world that values, you know, hard work, achievement, getting things done. And um, somebody actually introduced me to the mandala. And I just, <laughs> I remember one day just coloring mm -hmm. and coloring and coloring and coloring. And I thought, oh, wow, this is like way too much fun. And it seemed to be unproductive, but it was very calming. You're, so we'll have to do something like that. You're Melissa. right. It does. It does. And people who haven't tried it maybe don't understand why you would spend so much time, but there is so much to it. I think it's a matter of, of starting something colorful and, and completing it, you know, uh, and during that time, it's it's like it's relaxing, and you can mm -hmm. open your mind up to many ideas and thoughts. I think a lot of people might be able to get that same thing when if they take a a, a walk, a morning walk, or a hike, you know. Which you know, that's a nice way to open your mind and to think things and notice nature and stuff. But you could take a walk, right? right there on a piece of paper <laughs> and then you have something beautiful exactly. and so and there's a lot of interpretation involved i i cleaned my desk and i can't find anything but i wanted to show you some of mine but i'll, I'll have to uh, share with you on um instagram or pinterest so uh but yeah we just have a lot a lot of little things in common and blab too and the love of social media and uh, meeting people uh -huh. and um so it's pretty neat. I really appreciate getting a chance to, to have you all to myself here. Does anybody want to come in and say uh, a few words uh, before we get going? I'm going to stop the recording and um, say good night to everybody. Uh, I kind of got off track here. Hold on. A minute. Okay. So I'm going to end the show and then we could talk a little bit more. And um, I'm going to edit that part out so it sounds really beautiful at the end. So we're going to kind of backtrack <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Uh, get my music queued up. I, yes, I have outro music too. Okay. No room. All right. So um, thank you so much, Anna, for being here. Thank you for sharing your story with us and for um, inspiring us to really to, to go that next level, to be a master, to be confident, to learn more and to share with the world. And you're doing all of that. Thank you so much for your inspiration. Well, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. Well, you are such a superstar. So I am gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on the music here. Close it out. So you got to dance a little bit. You and your little doggy through. Thank you so much for coming to Tinseltown tonight. It's been such a pleasure to talk to Anna Jo Scheller and about Black Belt Selling. So thank you again for being here. We'll see you next Tuesday night. Oh my gosh, next Tuesday I've got Kim Summers and we're going to be talking about confidence. And during the day we'll be talking to uh, Rachel from Snapchat. She's really awesome and she's going to be talking oh, wow. about Snapchat, the Snapchat mentor from England. So I have a special time to meet with her at 1 o'clock. So, well, so next week it's a two for one, double header. <laughs> you have to join me then. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night, Yana. Good night, everyone. Good night.